update tonight. Let's get right to it. Uh, prophecy update 2817. Perilous time. This will be in a, uh, there's so much stuff. I'm going to push the video out to next week and uh, maybe talk about AI the week after that. A lot of stuff going on in AI. A lot of stuff, uh, artificial intelligence and things that are being pushed to such degree that I'm more convinced now that we are going to see some strange things within our lifetime. I used to think, well, maybe my grandkids, maybe my kids, but, um, you know, I used to watch the Jetsons, and I thought, how would they ever do that? Um, now, I don't know if I'll ever see it. God's got his hand on it in history, and he allows things to come. He doesn't allow things to happen. They've been wanting to do these kinds of things for quite a long time, but then um, there's wars, regulations, popularity of products, and People's acceptance of things don't allow it to come into the market, but there's a lot of strange things that are being promoted now, and um, you saw that in the commercials on Super Bowl weekend, uh, deliveries through drone and things like that. Uh, but see, 30 years ago, that they've thought about that a long time ago. In fact, they had they had drone capabilities and technologies in World War II. The only thing is, um, it wasn't for the public; it, they didn't have it. Uh, readily available. It was very expensive. Um, now with the uh, advancements of technologies and chips and things of that nature, it's very, very easily to buy one and almost make one. Uh, my, my son loves them. He plays with them. He's got a little one and they break really quick. So most of them made in China and things of that nature. But the really expensive ones are available now. Um, Sam's Club, Costco, Amazon's wanting to um, deliver stuff through home uh, through drone now, so expect that coming to your neighborhood near you. Uh, drop off your package through drone technology. So perilous times will come. We'll leave that for another time. Israel's moving ahead and uh, turning down the, well, they're turning up the heat on the settlements and turning down anything that the Palestinians are trying to offer in the sense of uh, trying to build uh, trying to stop them from building in East Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, what we call the, the hills of Israel, the mountains of Israel. And here's, uh, you can see some of the, you can go online and find out these news. Um, this is probably a better way to, to do it if somebody wants to really see it. Um, 3,000 new homes have been uh, approved uh, under the Trump administration. Uh, they're moving very fast. They first uh, had 2,600, then they upped it by, uh, by about 400 to make it 3,000. Of course, um, uh, they, this Israel provocative law to retroactively legalize settlements. So they're going back even when they stopped it. So when they stopped it, sometime last year, they are retroactively going back. So there's not only the new homes, but the retroactively to 2016, they are building about 3,000 homes and, uh, in that area. And this is the hot zone. This is the area, the mountains of Israel. In fact, when you read Ezekiel 36, that is what Ezekiel's talking about, the mountains of Israel, the hotly contested area. We called it, biblically, Judea and Samaria. The world calls it the West Bank. That's how it's... Uh, um, how it's known. Of course, the uh, Israelis went to the UN, and the UN uh, had an earful uh, by the uh, Muslim community that this was provocative and unacceptable. And the PLO settlement says uh, uh, these uh, settlements, they say the PLO, are last nailed in the coffin for peace. We can't have these that gets in the way of peace. Of course, they're very angry at the UN because the UN is not moving fast against the um, against Israel and against its envir uh, its uh, its settlements and regarding the Temple Mount the UN had um, made a comment a couple weeks ago that it does belong to the Jewish people uh, and there was some controversy of what they uh, what, what they why they said it um, but of course the, the EU um, it's very upset at the legalization of these uh, um, settlements, and they're condemning it. In fact, uh, I believe her name is Christine Lagarde, uh, came out and said, this would be a terrible world without uh, Muslims and refugees and Palestinian settlements in Israel. It would be a terrible world. And, um, of course, she doesn't make any comments on the fact that um, 
Muslim terrorists have destroyed many of those areas. Gaza has been destroyed. And um, many of the EU nations have been attacked by terrorists, migrant terrorists within the European Union. Uh, following this, though, you have Mr. Trump, who is appointing son-in-law Jared Kushner to head the Middle East peace conferences. And the reason why is he's a great negotiator, but he's a Jew. He's a Jew. That's main, the main thing why he's allowed by the Trump administration to head um, the, uh, the peace negotiations. He can make a deal. He's a Jew, he says, in joking manner. Uh, I'm sure somebody took offense to that. But um, he's a natural deal maker. Of course he's a Jew. And um, it's interesting because the approach that the Trump administration is having with the Orthodox Jews and the Temple Mount is that they really like Kushner. They really like his approach. He's an Orthodox Jew. Uh, he keeps Sabbath. He eats kosher, turns off his phone on Friday night. And, of course, that's very good for the Jewish community. They see him as a natural ally. And, of course, this is why he's about to head the peace negotiations when they do start, we don't know. The U.S. Embassy is continuing to be a hot topic, of course. All the Palestinians, as well as the Muslim world, so, as well as terrorist organizations, are crying out against Trump, but he's moving forward with it. We don't know when it's going to happen. Uh, but the, already, the mayor of Jerusalem, his name is uh, Nir Barkett, is investigating where it would go. So uh, there is a uh, constantly conversations from the ambassador of the U.S., uh, with the mayor of Jerusalem, and the location is being explored and searched. They've never been this close, they said. It almost seems unreal. Uh, they look like uh, it's going to be on the outskirts of Jerusalem, um, which it will be near the settlements of East Jerusalem. It could be there. And so they are very excited about what this could mean. Now, we know what the Muslim world says about this. If he does this, there'll be bloodshed. If he does this, there'll be an attack on Jerusalem. Of course, the Bible talks about that. Eventually, there will be an attack on Jerusalem. Zechariah 12 through 14 tells us Judea, Jerusalem will be surrounded. All the nations will come against Jerusalem. Um, but moving into this, this topic, this is um, sort of an interesting thing that has been happening because uh, out of, Israel's in the, the major front. So if you think about it biblically, uh, according to biblical prophecies, you have Temple Mount, Jerusalem. It's the center of Bible prophecy. Israel, of course, it's at the center, but it's specifically Jerusalem, Judea, the Temple Mount. But then you have the outside peripherals, wars, rumors of war, nations against nations. So this is where you have to look at Bible prophecy. There are center things, there are peripheral things, but they all, uh, for lack of a better word, they all work together. They all converge together to let us know the signs and the seasons. And this one specifically, it's been heating up. And uh, I'm more convinced today that even though uh, Mr. Trump is in office, that we are much closer to war than we were a few months ago. And I'll explain why. And this is not necessarily all the U.S. Uh, goading necessarily, but there are some people within the Trump administration that uh, are very much pro-war. And this is something that uh, although I agree with a lot of things they said and a lot of things they've done, there's some things about their approach to uh, negotiations and power and peace through strength that uh, could escalate into something that um, many feel will go into the South China, South China Sea. And this is one of them. The Pentagon is tracking uh, this missiles that China's, they, they've had it for years. They've actually, this is actually one of their least amount of warheads. They have one that has like 40 warheads, and they literally just shoot it over the atmosphere, and it deploys 40 different warheads once they enter the atmosphere back again. And you can, you can actually pinpoint where they're going to go. So multi-pinpoint accuracy uh, through one missile. This had 10, and they tested it, and the Pentagon was very upset about it. And, of course, China's already come out and said, uh, yeah, Pearl Harbor too, the South China Sea, that belongs to us. U.S. is saying, no, it's independent. It's an, it's an ocean that um, uh, has a lot of connections to a lot of different other islands 
as well as um, um, there's the Philippines, Vietnam, uh, Taiwan, they all claim some part of those islands are claimed by those different countries. Of course, China is the, the big dog in the sea. Uh, the U.S. is right there. Uh, and they're saying, well, American forces can be crippled and attacked by Chinese vessels. Of course, Steve Bannon, uh, which is in the Trump uh, administration, um, he has this to say, and this is really interesting. If you, if you go to The Guardian, I'll give you the article if you want it. I cropped it up a little bit at the top. Uh, this is what he said. It's actually interesting. We're going to war in the South China Sea, no doubt. This is not long ago. And he says, uh, uh, we, no doubt we're going to fight in the next 10 years over these islands. And now um, we've been talking about these islands for quite a while already, so sometimes I, I get bored of bringing it up all the time. But it is something to be aware that there's a multi, multilateral wars that are happening at the same time, which is very troubling. No doubt about that. He said at the same time, the U.S. will be in another major war in the Middle East. Now, this is what he's saying. Now, like him or not, I mean, he's a good journalist. I don't know why he's in the, making those kinds of statements and decisions like that. Uh, like I said, he's a great journalist, Breibart. Um, I don't know he's a general. I, don't, I didn't know he was a general. He's not. Uh, but he's making calls like that. This is the troubling part about it. Uh, whether you like it or not, he is um, very influential within the Trump administration. Now, with that being said, the North Koreans are, of course, in the, the thick of things. And they're testing, and they're uh, because they have China's approval, remember, uh, uh, North Korea is like China's uh, fighting dog, if, for lack of a better word. They, um, they do what China says, and they test what China wants them to test. And this is one thing that the U.S. and South Korea, as well as Japan, are very concerned that um, Mr. Kim Jong will, uh, has no restrictions, has no, uh, he's very unilateral, will test and continue to test against Japan and against South Korea. Um, of course, the war, uh, the drums of war continue, and, and this is a very interesting article because they believe, now this is from a Jewish article, that because Israel has really had not partaken of the Syrian conflict, they mainly allowed Russia, they mainly allowed the U.S. Uh, through their proxy army, ISIS, and um, Russia and Turkey be the major players within that conflict, the, they have allowed this Golan Heights, which is the northern part of Israel. So think of Mount Hermon, when Jesus would go up to the great mountains of Mount Hermon, the very top of Israel. It's right next to Syria, and they've always called it the hallway. It's a corridor, really. Uh, you can go right into Syria, Iran, within miles. Very, very close. Of course, the, the Valley of Jezreel connects that, which we call it Armageddon, but Armageddon is just a little mountain. It's the valley of Jezreel that's the biggest part of the, uh, of the fight. It's right there. And this article is not a Christian article. It's saying, look, by doing this, by abandoning the Syrian conflict and not being a part of it, they have actually created a corridor through the Golan Heights into the Jezreel Valley for Iran to come in. That's really interesting if you... If you, if you know your Bible, that's what Ezekiel says about Iran and Gog and Magog and the house of Tagarma and its allies coming through the northern part of Israel. Now, you got to remember biblically and geographically, when we study hermeneutics or Old Testament or New Testament, geography is always important in the Bible, right? Because things, it, it, it locates where things are going to happen. The Bible always calls it the north. They will be invaded from the north. And so oftentimes people think, well, that's got to be, you know, all these other nations. And oftentimes it's not necessarily nations that are directly north of Israel, but east of Israel. That's the key. Syria, Iran, Turkey, not necessarily it's on the east, but the Middle East, the, the, the countries that are on the east of Israel, they have to come through the Tigris and Euphrates, over the Tigris and Euphrates, through the Golan Heights, and they're literally coming down north. They're really coming down south, but from the north, uh, because they, they come from the east, but it's through the north. I know that doesn't make sense geographically, but that's what the Bible calls it. When they attack from the north, 
are usually countries that come from the East. Now, of course, Russia's in the East, but Iran's in the East, Syria's in the East, most of these terrorist countries or terrorist organizations are in the East, and now they believe, now this is from a Jewish organization, so it's not pro-Muslim or pro-Islam, it's just saying we have allowed this to happen, now this is a, a very weak spot in our, um, in our security forces. Now, um, because Iran is mentioned, I had to bring this one up, because Trump is aligning with Netanyahu, and the target is Iran. This is where it gets a little concerning. Knowing biblical history, knowing biblical prophecy, uh, Persia, Elam, these are names in the Bible about uh, Iran, are mentioned as being a major player in the last days. Specifically, Daniel sees a very demonic influence, a very demonic, uh, demonically influenced power, uh, the prince of Persia, over the land, influencing uh, Persia to come against Israel. You see the scriptures, Michael stands up in, for the, in favor of Israel and to protect it. Why? Because there's a prince of Persia, there's a prince of Greece, and uh, the White House is very concerned, and they're actually weighing, designing, uh, designating uh, the Iranian Revolutionary Army as a terrorist nation, as a terrorist threat. Now, it is of one of the seven countries that they banned um, uh, Muslims coming in, uh, those terrorist nations, those seven of them. Uh, but if they do design, uh, designate it as a terrorist group, it could be a precursor for obvious attack. These are a terrorist threat. We banned them, etc. Of course, the, um, uh, he's always had something to say, the uh, Humeni. Um, he's saying, okay, you, you can't paralyze this. Um, they obviously have the deal. They've obviously been testing. They've obviously been, um, been concerned um, about Israel. Uh, Israel's been concerned about Iran for quite a long time. And even uh, the, the Prime Minister of Israel, Netanyahu, had posted on his Facebook, like, look, this is what they're trying to do. They got missiles with the words in Persian and in Hebrew that uh, they're coming after Israel. This is for Israel. This is against Israel. And, um, of course, they are... Uh, they've been armed, a lot of Russian military power that they have. They have a lot of nuclear power, uh, or developing nuclear power, but they have a lot of missiles from Russia, excuse me. And they're developing them very, very quickly, very, very fast. In fact, Israel, if you were to interview Israel's military leaders, of one concern, Iran. That's the concern. And, of course, critics of Mr. Trump say, well, he's going to war for Israel. That's all he's going to war for, to protect Israel. And uh, they might have a point. They may have a point, but it's, it's not a critical point. It is to say that uh, Mr. Trump sees Israel as an ally and sees Iran as a big threat. Now, last week we were here. Remember they, they fired those missiles and uh, some rebel groups from um, uh, Iran. They were actually uh, from Yemen, but they were sponsored by Iran. Shot down a Navy, uh, a Navy vessel from Saudi Arabia. Well, the next day, Iran ditched the dollar uh, in their oil, so, which was a major blow to the U.S. So you could see, remember what I told you, there's three major battles that happen, uh, especially in the last days. There's a cultural battle, cultural war. We've seen that in our nation. We see that in our country. Cultural war, you have, um, you can call it a, the Marxist cultural war where there's the destruction of the Judeo-Christian values, society, family, marriage, uh, the, the, the idea of what a person is, um, that's that. Then there's just the economic war. The economic war is oftentimes um, not recognized, but they are precursors to the third type of war, the real military war. And you see things lining up. There's, um, there's already a, an embargo or there's already some type of uh, economic sanctions against, uh, against Iran. And of course, uh, top security advisor, Mr. Flynn said, unnoticed, Iran is put on notice, and many people believe it's foreshadowing a war. So in the midst of all this, in the midst of the Super Bowl, in the midst of everybody uh, enjoying that, and, and, and the election, and all the riots, and all the UC Berkeley stuff that's crazy, we were here, last week on Wednesday, and they were burning down UC Berkeley uh, over uh, Mr. Milo Yiannopoulos, uh, uh, homosexual conservative speaking. 
and um, which is very interesting stuff. If uh, uh, I mean, he's it's a show. I mean, it's it's he's somebody that uh, it's really more for the drama and the show. But he is a conservative that they're being tr shut down for it's free speech. And I don't agree with a lot of things he says. I don't agree uh, with his pro homosexual stance. Uh, but the left and the media hates him because he comes across as a conservative. He comes across as somebody that has a, a different view than the Marxist cultural leanings uh, of the media and, of course, of the Democratic Party. Now, one step closer to war, they have new sanctions on Iran. What I'm saying is lining up. What I'm saying is you have already the culture war in America. You have a uh, economic sanctions and economic war going on and um, no love lost between Israel and Iran. And uh, the, the, our, the current administration keeps heading down this road of drumming down the war. Now, this is Nikki Haley. Uh, the, on the first day on the job last week, the U.S. ambassador to the, uh, to the U.N. condemns Russia and says Russia's going to find out how strong we are. Um, and, and I don't know why you would go on and say that, but at the same time, that's, I mean, you want to make a first impression. I suppose this is the way to do it. Um, um, the other thing I wanted to bring up was this. Uh, I should have shrunk this a little bit, but this is Trump's executive order on immigration, the seven nations that were uh, put on notice. That they're not going to allow uh, to come in. But one of the things that's fascinating, uh, I think it's point number seven. I, I zoomed it in, but it's, I think it's point number seven. And uh, in the, what they're trying to do with these, the ban on Muslims coming in from these seven nations, terrorist nations, uh, which, by the way, I do agree with it. I think it should be expanded. I don't know why Saudi Arabia wasn't on it. I don't know why other nations were not on it. Um, but I suppose it's a good start. If you were to you know, quote me on that, it's a good start. Um, but it should be expanded. Now, uh, it is to say this, though. Behind the scenes at all, behind the whole scene, is this biometric entry exit tracking system. This is within his uh, immigration policy. Uh, by the way, I'm not, I'm not attacking Trump in any way. I agree with a lot of things that he's doing. Not everything. I'm not a sicko fan. But biblically, um, these things come to, um, come to the forefront of our mind. Biometric entry exit tracking system. Why is it in there? Well, what it basically says is that if you're going to come in through the U.S., uh, all travelers, I don't know if I have that one. Did I put that one in there? I wish I did. No, I didn't. Oh, that's because I didn't zoom it in. Hold on. Watch this. Through the magic of... Oh, there it is. Ah, see? Second line. Exit tracking system for all travelers to the United States. What does that mean? Biometrics. Eye scans. Replacing boarding passes. Now, this has been in the works for quite a while. It's, it's, I, I brought it up here quite a while ago. It was boring after a while because it was the same thing. Uh, but they did it at the border. Now they're doing it at the airports. They have the companies already set up. Uh, face recognition. So you just walk up there, and you don't even have to show your passport. It's already done deal. And... Um, that's in the bill. That's in the immigration bill uh, for the seven nation ban. Uh, oh, see, I did have it. I just moved it. For all travelers, there it is, sorry. For all travelers, um, it's, not, it's not in full um, application yet. However, uh, they're moving forward with it to such a degree that we're going more and more digital. By the way, they do have face recognition. In fact, Vizio came out, was it today or yesterday? Vizio came out and said, yeah, we've been using the cameras on smart TVs in, our, in, 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 you know, in your room to let, you know, we could see. Now, this 20 years ago, people were saying that, you know, the one time, you know. You ever read the book, read the book 1984, uh, Orwell? They were talking about this stuff for quite a, long, quite a long time. Well, people thought it was crazy. Now they actually admit it, and Vizio came out and said, yeah, smart TVs, they're tracking devices. By the way, you know what? It's a tracking device, too, are all those little home systems that you can get now. Alexa. <laughs> Alexa. 
Uh, they admitted it now. They hear you. Well, obviously they hear you. You talk to them, they respond back. But you can track it. They can track all. I don't know what's the other one. Um, I think Alexa is the most popular one, but Google's going to come up with one, and, and Siri's already one. You know, this is you know a phone, but it's, it's responding, and it has got voice recognition and stuff like that. So anyway, things are moving very, very quickly behind the scenes. I mean, we see you know war, chaos, hate Trump. You know, you know, hate Trump. You know, what is that? Love Trump hates. Yeah, everybody's up in arms about it. Burning UC Berkeley behind the scenes. History continues. Prophecies fulfilled. They have to get to the point where uh, precursors to um, the mark of the beast in so many ways. Not, this is not the mark of the beast, but you know what I'm saying. Technology is quite present now. And when they start um, digitizing entries to countries, it's going to get very, very interesting because now you have a national identity, a national security, a national not just fingerprints and a passport, but an iris scan that will recognize you as a citizen of the United States. So it's great, it's great safety. However, it, it's a door. It's an it's a entry level to uh, more and more control by uh, governments and totalitarian regimes. Uh, as one video that I watched, um, I think it was the Daniel Project, where they, had the, uh, they were interviewing one of the... Um, one of the uh, um, I think it was, he would say, uh, uh, a tech. He developed some of the software. And he says, yeah, you know, it would, have been, um, it would have been crazy to think what would Hitler could have done if he had this technology. Because he was really concerned. He was actually concerned that they had gone so far into tracking everything and recognizing everything and being able to know what everybody's doing that if he had it, he said, it would have been, he probably would never would have been defeated, to say the least. Now, uh, back to Russia. Today, Daryl texted me this information. Thank you, Daryl, and Brother Davies also. Uh, prepare for war. Vladimir Putin is uh, re-upping his uh, air force. He's saying, let's get prepared. If we're going to go through an exercise, let's get prepared. Um, NATO, not necessarily against the U.S. per se, although you heard what Nikki Haley said. Now, don't take my word for it. Go home and Google Nikki Haley, U.S. Ambassador, U.N., you know, opening speech, and you'll hear it. I wish I could have brought it here today, but it was too hard to splice up. Uh, Russia delivers 50 missiles to Syria. It was just this week. Now, preparing the Air Force, delivering missiles to Syria. Uh, S-400 defense system in Moscow are ready to go. Now, this is their top of the line. This has replaced the S-300, which obviously S-400 air defense system, right? Uh, this is the newest thing that they have. You can go online and see how they work. Phenomenal. I mean, I'm not pro-war, but if you want to have a defense system, uh, by the way, they sold a bunch of this to Iran. They sold a bunch of this to Iran. And uh, U.S. tanks, as part of the NATO, moves closer. This is in Latvia. They're moving closer to the eastern border because they are concerned about Russia mobilizing. Russia is concerned about NATO mobilizing. There's no love lost between the EU and Russia. And the EU, EU has a lot of problems and more, more importantly, they have a problem with heating and gas lines, which they get a lot of oil and a lot of gas from Russia. Are you cutting their nose to spot your face? I have no idea, but they think they can get oil and they can get um, gas from other places other than Russia. I don't know. I, I, it, it's hard to understand why they're doing that. However, they may have something in place with the immigration crisis, you know, could that be, you know, people for oil, people for gas, the EU is allowing them to come in for some sort of favor. It wouldn't be the first time the UN did that, remember that food for, food for missiles with Iraq, and they were selling food, and, you know, UN was giving them food, and then the, and they were arming <coughs> uh, Iraq, I'm sorry, they were giving Iraq food, and then Iraq was giving them weapons. Um, now, this is, a, this is sort of a side note. Pivot, 180 degree. I saw this article and I thought, this is what's un very interesting. Um, because Israel usually gets attacked. This is uh, a warmonger, terrible nation that kills children. Well, in the Middle East, because of the war in Syria, lots of orphans, lots of children that are left without their parents. Guess who's taking them in? 
Israel. Israel's taken in a lot of Christian orphans. These are, uh, some of them are Christian, some of them are Muslims, but the, the, uh, the, they're definitely orphans. And uh, the, the state of Israel, the government of Israel's taking them in. You wouldn't find that news. You have to go through like page 33 behind all the other ones. You know, it's just like behind sports and behind, it's not, it's not even on the U.S. newspapers. This is an Israeli newspaper, but it's on the back, back, back page. And um, fascinating. Uh, this is another one that I found that um, was very interesting, was this. Many fear that uh, there would be uh, a war in megacities, urban war in megacities in the U.S. because of the turmoil. They don't believe it's going to stop. All these protests and all these, uh, uh, we were talking about it in prayer, Miss Alice, you know, Roy and Miss Carol was ask, were asking you, have you ever seen this before? Well, here's one article that says, no, this is unprecedented. We've never had anything like this where urban wars, I mean, you already have Chicago, which they've already been warned, you don't do anything, we're going to move in our military. They're going to bring the National Guard into Chicago. Now, um, it'd be quite a thing if they have some kind of martial law planned out for Chicago. Um, we don't know, but it's so bad. And this article says, we believe it's going to be such a turmoil because of the left uh, democratic attack on conservatives. But add in the refugee crisis, add in immigration, add in gangs, add in already existing Muslim uh, um, gangs in inner cities. And they said, if, uh, if we're not careful, we may have a war within the war. That means we're fighting a war outside with these nations, China, Iran, and we're fighting an internal war. Jesus said, war, rumors of wars, nations, which is the word ethnos, ethnic groups against ethnic groups, within nations, within itself. This is what we're looking at. Now, Christian persecution continues. This man, um, I didn't get his name, um, but I went to CBN.com. Um, he's an evangelist in India. We need to lift him up in prayer. He passes Bibles to Hindus, attacked. Attacked simply for carrying and passing out Bibles. Now, India has a large Christian population. Praise the Lord for that. But Hindus are becoming more radicalized. Hindus are becoming more violent toward Christians. This has been happening for quite a few years. Uh, of course, the article came out that the Boko Haram in Nigeria has destroyed 900, 900 churches since 2010. Uh, at least the estimate goes. It, it could be more, but this is the best estimate. And um, it continues in Nigeria. Uh, it continues in Sudan. It continues in Pakistan. It continues in India. It continues in North Korea. It continues in most of the world. Christians are persecuted. Um, in fact, they predicted more according to the surveys and according to what they see as geopolitical concerns, more Christians will be persecuted this year. And um, so our need for prayer, our need for help to, the, um, to help the persecuted church through some of the ministries that we help and work with, there's that wall back there with all the information, it's going to be um, even more important. Ms. Carol, did they stop doing that uh, Voice of the Martyrs, those letters to, uh, uh, to, to the, they stopped doing those letters. Those cards, yeah, we can, they discontinued them. What a shame. That, that was a really good one. Yeah. Yes, keep that. Really? Very good. We've got to talk about that. That's really good. Uh, of course, the other concern is Jews are not... Uh, allowed the persecution of Jews continues. Um, they're actually very concerned. In fact, you guys remember uh, at the inauguration, Rabbi uh, Marvin Hare, uh, for the, for, he's actually from right here, from the Simon Wiesenthal Center, um, he, was, he gave one of the, the, I guess it was a prayer, kind of a speech, quoting uh, Psalm 122, and those who sow in tears will reap in joy. Wonderful. I think it was really good. Well, the amount of hate that they have received by, uh, in America over this, uh, because one, he's a Jew. Two, he invokes scripture. And that's not allowed. And so the anti-Semitism that has risen in America 
is very troubling, and some of the Jewish centers are uh, becoming targets. In fact, I believe it's 94 already this year, 94 Jewish centers in America have been uh, threatened um, across the United States uh, with some sort of attack, some sort of retaliation. Um, and so you have Christians being persecuted, you have wars, rumors of wars, you have nations against nations, you have uh, a severe persecution of Christians, even of Jews, <coughs> excuse me, technology being um, escalated to such degree, and um, all we need is a track on apostasy, and um, we saw that this week, uh, I, I texted out to some of you guys, uh, probably one of the most nefarious false teachers in our nation, uh, Rick Warren, on one of the most conservative, so-called conservative stations in, our, in Southern California, K-Wave, 4.30 a.m. and 11.30 p.m. Now, this, uh, the, now, a lot of pastors have said, this is okay, appeasement, it's okay, you know, we'll work it out. Um, I have the whole program. I, I mean, it's like, if you knew what this guy believed, not only his purpose-driven life, his purpose-driven world, his purpose-driven, uh, there's purpose-driven purpose -driven nations where you're, you know, you just ask people, hey, do you have a purpose? Yeah, okay, you're saved. Uh, who wants to have a purpose? Okay, you have a purpose. Okay, you're saved. And on and on, they, they go into these nations, like African nations, and give them purpose. And, uh, of course, he's uh, very much into social justice and things like that. Uh, into Chrislam, one of the most uh, fervent uh, progenitors of Chrislam, trying to get it into the mainstream churches. Um, it's one thing where you may speak at conferences that you don't agree with, necessarily with all the speakers, but you want to proclaim the truth. There's another thing when you allow the wolf to come into your, into your home. And this is what they, what they have done. So 4.30, Rick Warren, 5 o'clock, Greg Laurie. Uh, you can see where people are going to become very confused. And this is all about appeasement. Appeasement, appe let's just let Calvary go the way it's going to go. Don't rock the boat. Just let them do it. Um, you know, it's been said, appeasement is like the guy who feeds the crocodile and hopes he's the last one the crocodile eats. That was Winston Churchill. <laughs> appeasement is like feeding a crocodile and hopes he eats you last. That's exactly where this is going. Um, this is one thing we have to do. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Isaiah says it. Jesus told us the door will be shut, just like in Noah's day. The time will come where there'll be no light, the Bible says. Work while you have the light. And then darkness comes. There'll be no light where no man can work. That's a time of great tribulation. And we're approaching it to some degree fast, to some degree slow. To some degree speeds up, to some degree God holds back. Why does God allow that? This sort of ebb and flow? Because he wants to let us know things are happening, but he's also not willing that any should perish, but all come to repentance. Iran doesn't have the finger on the seals. Neither does Trump. Neither does North Korea. Jesus has his hands on the seals. And nothing's going to happen until he breaks the seals. That's what the Revelation says. And you can rest assured it won't happen until Jesus says it's the right time for it to happen. That's why, no matter how troubling these things are, we go back to the Word of God. We go back to our anchor for the soul. Our soul and our mind can go trouble all these different places, but just like a ship that is tossed to and fro by the wind, it needs an anchor to be tied to in order to know its fixed point, in order to know where direction it's going to go, and in order to have security and hope. That's our Lord. Seek the Lord while he may be found. People are, in some ways, opening, to, opening up to this. They realize something's up. On the other hand, many of you guys go out witnessing on the streets. You see the deadness. You see the, how dense people are to the word of God and to the truth of God's word and to the reality that he did give us signs, the reality that he did tell us these things will happen. When you see these things happening, especially as we approach this period called the Great Tribulation, when you see these things happening, lift up your head. While we're in it, your redemption draws near. It's going to come to that, to that degree that we'll be able to understand more as we enter things more. But who knew these things were going to develop that way? 
Hopefully by the time we get to the next couple of weeks from now on AI and technology, we'll see more of how much things have sped up technologically that we are pretty much at the cusp of digital currency. It's already almost, it's, it's basically there. It just hasn't been socially accepted yet. Not socially accepted yet. Uh, however, all it takes, and we've said this before, all it takes is a catastrophe, a calamity, uh, some kind of attack, some kind of um, economic uh, collapse that they prevented it, and you could have very much technological, cha technological changes happening very, very quickly. And um, I think through all this, we're going to see some of them happening very quickly in our nation. So let's pray, and then we'll get started in our Bible study. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you, Lord, that you have the seals. Thank you, Lord, that nobody can open them except for you. And we praise you for who you are. And uh, yet, Lord, we trust that your wisdom and your mercy and your justice are all perfectly balanced in your timing of these things. We know, Lord, that things will speed up and yet things seem to slow down at times. And yet, it doesn't seem to go back. It's like we don't go back into anything. It just keeps moving forward. And uh, Lord, uh, we, we thank you that you never want us to look back. You want us to look forward to your coming. And so, Lord, we, uh, we look ahead to what it will mean for believers in, in our nation, in the world. We lift up those who are being persecuted and attacked today. We're reminded that uh, the book of Hebrews tells us that we uh, could be in prison like they, and to remember them as we were, as if we were. So, Lord, we, we praise you and ask you for your grace tonight to not to fear, but, Lord, not to go away from the battle, but to go toward the battle, to take, take it to where the enemy is without fear and without, Lord, any concern because you're in control. We honor you, Lord, and um, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable, which is our reasonable worship service. In Jesus' name. Amen. Pause for a little bit.